Everybody, this is Leo Brady with MovieGuy.com. I am here with the fantastic documentary filmmaker Matthew Heineman. Matthew, thank you so much for being with me here, being with me here today. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for doing this, man. So I've seen almost all of your films, so this was uh, an easy uh, interview for me to get excited for. Now I want to sort of just jump in. You finish making the first wave at what the middle of 2021 and so then you're seeing so you're dealing with the heroics of people on the front line of covid um but then you hear that the u.s is pulling out of afghanistan so how long does it take you to decide okay that's my next project i'm throwing myself right into that situation we're going we're going there i need to make this film so this Retrograde actually preceded the first wave. This has been like three or four years in the making. Um, we it took a long time to get access to the very insular Green Beret community, um, and you know get the permissions we needed to, to deploy. Um, then COVID happened, and I ended up making the first wave. Um, <laughs> and so then I you know circled back to making this movie. So it, the retrograde sort of sandwiched the making of of uh, the first wave. Yeah, well, and it, that that's interesting too because, like, you, so you talk about getting that excess, but did you expect it to sort of turn into this last days of Vietnam kind of experience? Or, I mean, obviously, I I think I don't know if I'm off base by saying this, but I think how things happened was a outcome that anybody could have expected would have would have been one of the outcomes, but you were, as you said, you were sandwiching it with the first wave. So you kind of were already there on the ground in some days. Did you expect it to sort of turn into everything that it became? No. And, and you know, again, it sort of started out as this portrait of, of the Green Berets um, after numerous delays in COVID. You know, we didn't get to Afghanistan on this deployment until uh, January 2021. And when that happened, obviously, it became clear that wow, actually, can maybe tell a different story uh, through the prism of this deployment, the story of this final chapter uh, of, of you know the longest war in U.S. history, um, and you know it, it seemed likely that this was the last U.S. deployment to Afghanistan. Right. And so that was the first shift. Then you know three months later, President Biden pull pulls out our troops, and you know at the beginning of a movie, at the first act of a movie, I didn't have a film by any stretch and the story certainly wasn't over. Right. And so that's when we reached back out to General Sami Sadat, who'd been working, uh, an Afghan general in charge of Southern Afghanistan, who'd been working with the Green Berets. That's when we pivoted um, again. And, and you know, I reached back out to him and asked him if we could come back and embed with, with you. And are you open to that? He said, yes. And yeah, we, we pivoted and, 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 and shifted the lens to focus on seeing the end of the war through his eyes and then, you know, pivoted again one final time when, you know, things fell quite rapidly and, you know, we had this sort of mass tragic exodus from the airport um, and, yeah. you know, opened up opened up the aperture of the storytelling to see, um, you know, all these civilians that the Green Berets and General Sadat had been fighting for desperately trying to flee. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and and sort of you are you are definitely categorized as a documentary filmmaker but a sort of a topic that i have a conversation with you know fellow film critics or other people who i talk about documentaries with um the debate i always have is whether it's filmmaking or journalism so <laughs> obviously maybe the two merge together but yeah. Do you consider yourself sort of a journalist or a filmmaker first? And how, how would you sort of answer that debate of like what it means to be a documentary filmmaker? Huh. <laughs> I spend a lot of time in my life worrying about a lot of things. Uh, this is not to me, honestly, spend a lot of time thinking about. I, I don't know what I am, a, a journalist, a filmmaker, a storyteller. Um, you know, I've certainly 
been very fortunate in my career to be able to I've made you know narrative film a private war yeah um, and you know with my documentaries you know I, I I've, I've tried to at least push the genre and to make it you know as interesting as cinematic as any narrative film and then on the, on the flip side on my on my narrative film I tried to make it as authentic and as gritty as my documentaries so yeah. it's fun it's fun being able to sort of um play around on the edges of of what the genre is or should be um and that's what i love about docs especially is that there's no such a malleable art form and there's so many ways to tell stories and you know there's certainly not a right way or wrong way um right. i've just done it a certain way that that i believe is the most powerful way of doing it but that's just my obviously my own personal perspective right yeah well i mean and let's talk about sort of the way you, that you do it i mean obviously you you know we can't talk i really don't think you can talk about a lot of your films without talking about how you kind of put your own self in there you put yourself in harm's way you're not a stranger to this i mean i i think there were moments in cartel land where i genuinely feared for you know people's lives um that there has to be sort of that weight that weighs on you, uh, you know, your own safety, your crew's safety, uh, you know, what, how do you prepare yourself for these sort of things that you put yourself into, but also how do you recover? How do you recover like on the back end when you've had to get out of that situation? Yeah. I mean, these films have certainly taken a lot out of me. Um, <laughs> I I suffer from PTSD. I, I have anxiety. I have nightmares often. Um, they certainly uh, changed me in in many ways. Um, that's on one hand, and I I don't say that to ask for pity. I I, I say that because I think it's important to destigmatize uh, issues around mental health and and especially around mental health and journalism and telling these these difficult stories. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, I have a blue passport that allows me to come home and into the safety of the US. I get to sit here in a hotel in Los Angeles and talk to you. I get to go home to my, you know, apartment in New York. And that privilege is something that also weighs on me. Um, the guilt uh of of leaving these these people behind, these stories behind, uh, and coming back to the safety of the US. So yeah, these are these are, you know, complex things that I or I wrestle with. Um but you know, at the end of the day, I feel, I feel like it's very, very important to, and that's what I've tried to do throughout my career, take these big amorphous subjects, drug war in Mexico, ISIS in Syria, COVID, Afghanistan, and and he, try to humanize them, to try to put a human face to them, to, to create a little bit more empathy in the world, and um, to try to yeah make these things that feel so distant, so far away, feel a little bit closer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you... I mean, it definitely feels like such a submerging experience. Um, I, you know, I found the documentary to be <laughs> often shocking, but also heartbreaking, powerful. Um, I did want to ask you about the way you start the film. I mean, you distinctly just start it with, you know, four quotes from the last four presidents. Uh, you know, my interpretation of that was sort of a way of like, looking at it that it is not just a party problem it is an american problem that the united states of america sort of you know put put itself in was you know were you like okay first thing i'm going to do is that or was it something that you were like i i have to make it sort of a neutral outlook or a look that is more just american than right or left well you know, I've I've actively tried to, um, in my films, be as apolitical as possible. You know, I, I believe the world is divided enough. You know, we live in these echo chambers. Um, to me, the value of documentary film was to bring people together, to spark conversation, um, and to, yeah, and to sort of allow rational dialogue and conversation to to happen. Yeah. Um, so you know, I I. I yeah, I try to make my films as apolitical as possible. The, the opening of the film, I mean, I, I guess in a sense, yeah, it did show that, you know, two you know, Democratic presidents and two Republican presidents uh, 
you know, enacted these policies, but but I think it was more an effort to show the passage of time and the length of this war, for, you know, for the uninitiated is how long we've actually been fighting there. Um, yeah. This has been the longest war in US history. And that these decisions that are made, you know, in this case by, by men in white houses um, have massive impacts on, on individuals far, far away. And so that, that long panning shot of the mountains in Kabul um, as the presidents sort of give their 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 ethos on the war and 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 and, and propagating it forward uh obviously ending with biden you know and then smash cutting into the ground in the airport it, you know it's also to create this sort of juxtaposition of like okay that's that's not the story we're telling we're going to be on the ground and show yeah. show the impact of these decisions so you know that, that the film is really uh an up close and personal uh, illustration of the impact of those decisions made by people very far away. Yeah. Well, awesome. Matthew Heineman, congratulations on the film Retrograde. I absolutely loved it. It's one of the best documentaries of the year. I hope everybody takes a chance to uh, to watch it. And congratulations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Matt.